Hi, this is Richard Silverstein. Welcome to Social TV listeners. I write the blog Tikkun Olam. Over the past few weeks, there's been high drama playing out in Washington, D.C. As President Obama prepares to enter his second term later this month, key cabinet members, including Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, are leaving. They will be replaced respectively by John Kerry and Chuck Hagel, if confirmed by the Senate. Though Kerry's nomination is a done deal, Hagel's has been anything but. Chuck Hagel is a decorated veteran of the Vietnam War. Though a former Republican senator, he is known as a moderate and a maverick. He voted to support the Iraq War, but almost immediately turned against it. Hagel is known to be skeptical of military intervention in general as a policy, and specifically is against not just a military strike against Iran, but even the sanctions regime currently in place. This, as you can imagine, has driven Republican neoconservatives and the Israel lobby around the bend. They've dredged up a quotation from an interview in which Hegel referred to the Israel lobby as the Jewish lobby. This is supposed to prove that Hegel is an anti-Semite. What this theory neglects is that Israel's leaders themselves contributed to the confusion between the terms Jewish and Israeli when they conflate the two, saying that, for example, Iran wants to destroy not just Israel, but the entire Jewish people. It's hard to fault Hegel for making the same mistake Zionists have been making for decades when they turn Israel and Zionism into a form of Jewish religion. For weeks before Hegel's nomination was formalized, there was constant sniping against him. But then a strange thing happened. Reasonable journalists and analysts started to speak up. Tom Friedman was perhaps the first among them when he wrote a New York Times op-ed in Hegel's favor. Then others follow suit and it became a groundswell of reasonableness to counter the raucous shouts of the neocons seeking to torpedo Hegel. Barack Obama, never known for sticking his neck out or making the bold political move, responded in a way that was uncharacteristically courageous. He actually nominated Hegel. I have to admit, I was stunned. I've become used to an Obama who compromises and vacillates, who is too cool or calculating to stand up for principles. I feared the Israel lobby would once again destroy the chances to nominate a courageous, independent thinker for high office. The satirical newspaper, The Onion, even ran a spoof saying that if Hegel won confirmation, that Bibi would exercise his veto. As if ultimate control of U.S. policy rested not with Barack Obama, but Israel's prime minister. The joke made even more pointed reference to the toxic influence Israel and the lobby has on Mideast-related policy debate. Now it appears that Hegel has the votes to be confirmed. What will he be like as Defense Secretary? First, he won't be Bibi's cup of tea. He will further reinforce the distance that's developed between the U.S. and Israeli approaches on issues like Iran. If a U.S. attack under President Obama was unlikely before, it will be almost unthinkable now. Hegel, after all, regularly says that the only people who are eager to send boys off to war are ones who have not fought in one themselves. Hegel's nomination does not mean the U.S. will abandon Israel. In fact, Hegel has pledged to continue his support for Israel and said it would be even stronger on his watch. The intelligence cooperation will continue, the armed shipments will continue, the Security Council support continue. But Hegel will provide Obama fresh, unvarnished advice about military matters, and this has to alarm the Israeli government. Hegel does not easily accept consensus thinking. He thinks outside the box. He questions established wisdom. While he won't take any radical action to harm Israel's interest, he will encourage the president to consider uh, contrarian ideas. Again, this will not sit well with the Israel lobby or the Israeli government, which feels much more comfortable with politicians who tow a conventional pro-Israel line. All this means that if Bibi Netanyahu wants someone to use force against Iran, it's likely to have to be himself. Whether this means that war with Iran is more or less likely, only Bibi himself can know. Thank you very much. This is Richard Silverstein of Tikkun Olam.